Fly me to the moon and let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. Hey folks, thanks for tuning in. It's the Ed August Astrology and Tarot Show. Hello everybody out there. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon in the east and 1 o'clock central and uh, what, 11 in the morning on the Pacific time zone where they're being permeated with lots and lots and lots and lots of rain. I hope all those dams hold up. And uh, I'm here in the uh, mountain states in Phoenix, Arizona. And uh, thank you, thank you for uh, for tuning in and uh, and listening yet again. I'm on, as you know, uh, Tuesday at this time and Friday at this time and Thursday I'm on 9 o'clock uh, mountain time in the evening, so then we get those evening people out there. Uh, I'm going to look at a couple of questions that have been that have been uh, written um, in. One is from Dee Dee, and she asks, "Money, where is my money coming from this year? Where should I focus to get money, and what's my life purpose?" Well, doggone it, that's three questions actually. All I can do is do three cards, but Dee Dee, I really want to give you a good answer. So I'm thinking, Dee Dee. DD life purpose no the life purpose will be the third card the first card is going to be where is my money coming from this year you know we're asking a lot of the cards but then again they are magical and there's amazing synchronicity here there's spiritual energies that are being tapped as we shuffle and let's see Didi said on her message that I should um, put them in the middle I'm going to do that Didi I hope you're listening where is money? Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> the Wheel of Fortune, you know, up and down, up and down um, in terms of in terms of your wealth this this year. Those who are at the bottom will end up at the top and vice versa. It's a changing panorama of possibilities um, for you. Um, the second part of the question is, where should I focus? Where should I focus to get money right now? The world. The world means from farther away than you have been. It means from the people who are from different cultures and different uh, groups, uh, people who may be from visiting from other countries. Maybe this in, means travel. Think in terms of the travel and adventure that you can have this year. And the third one is your life purpose. Your life purpose is the three of pentacles which shows construction it shows working out a plan working out a system it actually has a craftsman who is um, making some decorations or some architectural details on a wall and there's two people that are talking to him and giving him directions and and they're they're just conversing about how best to do things this card has a lot to do with education the three of Pentacles that's a card of um, Gemini which has to do with mental abilities, with reading, with um, uh, you know, schooling yourself even more. You never get out of school, Dee Dee. You have to keep at it. So um, these are very good cards here. The Wheel of Fortune, though, it does mean that things will come up for you very suddenly this year in terms of your opportunities. The world may mean that you even will be moving. You may even move from one place to another. Uh, now let us go to another person who wrote in, and that is Shante, but I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It could be Shantez, S-H-U-T-E-Z, um, not sure, Shante. Shante says, hello, um, my name is Shante. I'd like to see if you see me and my husband, Michael, fixing our marriage in the upcoming months. That is a wonderful uh, reason to, to write in. It's a, it's a very important question. I hope that I am plugged in to the spiritual realms enough so that I can answer this question. I'm shuffling them. I'm shuffling those cards, and she wants me to cut them in the middle. I can do that. Shante or Shantez. Let's see. Ooh, temperance. And so, okay, okay, okay. Get the temperance card. Okay. First of all, normalcy and calm, peace and calm shall prevail between the two of you. You need to analyze and look at things very, very carefully. Be moderate in everything you do. The golden mean means that you don't go to extremes. The second card is the sun. As winter turns to summer, there's an extremely good chance that you'll be able to see eye to eye. 
But the third card is the um, is the seven of, um, of wands, which shows someone being on the defensive. Someone on the defensive. The ultimate thing is that you can't try to push your egos too hard and to be too, too defensive of each other. So what the, what I see is this is going off at, at a good start. It's a good start. Uh, there is a very good chance of peace and harmony as long as your egos don't get in the way. The King of Wands comes up. Well, I think that Michael wants to have his way. Michael is sitting on the throne there. And um, as long as you go along with I'm, – then I'm picking up the Eight of Swords. As long as you go along with Michael on this, everything will be fine. But if you try to speak up for yourself a little too much – and put yourself at the head of the parade and tell him what you want to do, then the Ace of Swords comes up. So there is a chance that this um, um, marriage could still have some problems if the ego gets in the way, if people start talking back, and uh, it just causes some grief. I wish I had better results. I mean, it looks it looks like there's a very good chance, but um, but you must stay at peace with each other, at peace and harmony. The King of Wands may also mean that someone moderates this whole situation like some kind of peacekeeper, some kind of relative, a counselor, a mentor, someone like that could help you. And, and this very well could be a, a good influence on you in the coming months ahead. Let me take a quick look at the current planets. The sun is in Pisces. The moon is in Capricorn. Okay, so we have the Pisces energy of the, the, the water, the warm, mellifluous, beautiful water influence. Uh, Neptune is also in Pisces. The sun is coming up to Neptune in about seven days, eight days. Beautiful time for mystics and lovers out there. But for the next two and a half days, the moon is in Capricorn, and that brings hard answers to your questions. That brings uh, the taste of reality in because the moon in Capricorn is not so sentimental. Meanwhile, Venus is desperately trying to catch up with Mars. I don't know. Uh, it's going to do it next month, I guess. They're both in Aries right now. So Venus in Mars is sign, the passionate sign of Aries. Mars in the passionate sign of Aries. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. That means that there's a lot of things going on in relationships right now. I'm going to skip over here to um, some very interesting people that um, want me to help them out. There is a, um, a woman by the name of Joanna. I'll just say this about her. She appears to be out here on the East Coast. I, sh I don't know if I should even say what town you're from or you're in. But um, Joanna is a wonderful um, Aquarius whose moon is in Aries. But Joanna, your moon is trapped in the 12th house. Your moon is those feelings and sentiments and love nature and desire for family and all kinds of good stuff. It's in Aries, that's good, but it's trapped in the 12th house, and there's only one aspect that the moon makes. So I get this feeling that you are, um, in some ways, kind of cut off from um, from, from relationships, and, and maybe relationships, or maybe you're shy. You know, it could be a little bit of shyness there, there also. And uh, right now, Mars and Venus and Uranus have all been going over the moon there. So you've been bombarded with information and facts. As a matter of fact, Uranus is the slowest moving planet. That's been there for about a year. It's gone over your moon. And so you have gotten yourself into a relationship. And the relationship is with a gentleman named named Mark. And uh, Mark is on the other side of the planet. And uh, let's see, I wrote a message and I didn't get a... A, a message back yet, not that I know of, that they have not actually seen each other. He is uh, down in Oz there. He's down there somewhere in Australia. And um, she is in uh, near New York City. And the question is, are when are they going to be able to get together? What the heck is going on? They've been trying to get together for a while. And it's like one thing after the other seems to be preventing them. I want to spend some extra time going over this. One thing that's happening is uh, Uranus, the planet of change and uh, radical um, decisions and everything, is going over Joanna, um, pardon me, did I say Joanna's? Um, yeah, Joanna's Saturn. That's a conflict of principles. Structures that you thought were dependable and permanent 
threatened by sudden events. It's a time of tension and sudden releases of tension. A conflict of principles could be going on. Yeah, Uranus brings change, and Saturn is the things that she wants to hold on to. Then Jupiter at the same time, this is from mid-November 2016 until the end of July 2017, it's squaring her sun. Jupiter always uh, adds intensity to impulses and the desire to have, uh, to be unrestrained, to do something just incredibly exciting. So this influences the test of your discipline and your self-restraint. If you are not a restrained person, you will react to this influence by going overboard in some way, overextending yourself, or living in a fool's paradise where you think nothing can go wrong, or you might squander a valuable resource only to find that you don't have enough of what you need at some later time. There's a feeling that luck will provide everything you need, but sometimes it doesn't work out. The other thing is Saturn right now, from the end of January 2017 until mid-November of 2017, is opposing Joanna's Mercury. And this is rigidity. This is Well, Mercury has to do with con- conversation and communication, and Saturn is opposing it right now. There's The things that you want to do, the movements that you want to make, are, are being hindered and um, at various different levels. You know, it could be jobs, careers, it could be what's really going on in your subconscious and and, uh, Mark's subconscious. At this time, your ideas and plans may be defeated or they may have concrete realization, but you will run into considerable resistance from others to what you say. This may result in severing relationships with those who disagree with you, if there is no longer any communication between you. So the good thing about you and your dear friend is that you are communicating really, really strongly. Meanwhile, you have other things also. Oh, my goodness, Saturn squaring Uranus, radical actions. This can be an extremely upsetting, intense period if you've allowed your life to crystallize into rigid patterns. So, um, yeah, as she says, it's been a long-distance relationship. We've both had financial setbacks preventing us from moving. Do you see us finally in the same location? She gives her date of birth, and um, her, now I'm going to turn to her friend, Mark, and um, he is um, born under the sign of cancer with Mars and Venus flanking the sun in cancer rising. So there's a handsome guy. Come on, this handsome guy. And, uh, you know, he knows well how to deal with women. He's got Saturn at the Midheaven. Mark has Saturn smack dab on the Midheaven, 24 degrees of Aries. And Saturn at the Midheaven sometimes means you're working so hard to get ahead, and yet there's sometimes some stone wall that comes up that makes it hard for you to, to to make the great achievement, the great achievement that you want. That by itself would not be, um, you know, would not make or break this, but there's some odd things here. Moon and Neptune are together in the house of love, the fifth house. The moon and Neptune together make a sweet music. They sound good. I bet he's got a radio voice like I do. And um, but the problem with it, it sort of gets to be unrealistic. The moon and Neptune together is, is dreamy. It's kind of like it wants... Uh, gee, you know, I don't script these shows. I just say the first thing that pops into my mind. I really should apologize for that. Anyway, it, it may not be as realistic about 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 love and matters of love. But what I really see of a difficulty here with uh, with Mark is that his Mercury, the planet of the mind, the mental processes and communication, is in the twelfth house. That's the same house of of secrets and skeletons in the closet and 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 shyness and uh, sometimes um, mental, you know reservations or things that people have. It's in Gemini, but it is trapped in <laughs> trapped in the twelfth house. It's it has a, um, a square to Uranus which shows um you know, that he's innovative, that he liked having power, that he's he's got a sharp mind. He's very excitable, very excited. But he also has uh, instability. There's some instability that I always see with Mercury Square uh Uranus. And um, he also has Mercury in a quincunx with Moon and Neptune. He also has, well, anyway, I I believe that the Mercury in the twelfth house in in in, uh, in Gemini in these aspects is um, uh, makes him just a bit eccentric. He has a know-it-all kind of attitude sometimes, but everybody's got to 
realize that Mark has a changeability aspect here of his mind, his emotions. It can confuse others sometimes. And he has a, a bit of the Iranian rebel attitude, a rebel attitude, which conditions his expressions. You know, he, he likes to um, break some of the rules and traditions and beliefs. And, and in the 12th house, it means that he hides a lot of what he's thinking about. Uh, you know, his own thoughts are very personal and private. He may not be willing to share what he really thinks all the time with other people. He resists authority. It's kind of almost like he wants to be a bad boy. Acts and he, he um, you fail to see why you have to live in certain ways, acting and behaving according to a social code of conduct or thinking within predictable and conventional parameters. So he wants to see, see he wants to do something different. So he um, gets into a long distance um, flirtation, which turns into a love affair with a woman who is on the other side of, of El Planeto out here on the East Coast. And um, I don't know, Mark is an outsider. He's hard to get to know. The core of my advice is going to come to both of them. And Mark, get to know what do you really want? What do you, do you really want to, uh, you know, to get um, with Joanna? and under what terms and conditions. I also sense that you like to save money. You're not a big spender, Mark, because he's got a um, an aspect here between Venus and uh, and Saturn that usually makes a person, well, I don't want to say tight with money, but, well, tight with money. <laughs> and he's going through some things, too. Radical actions, Saturn, square Uranus, mm, rigidity, Wow, he's just, I don't know, there's just a bunch of stuff in here that just makes me think that um, both of them, both of them are hindered right now. And part of it is, uh, even if they think that they know each other like the best friends that they are in the whole world, no, I don't think you know each other yet completely. I think, you know, you need to explore the the depths um, of, of, of each other's uh, being. Uh, you need to Skype more, um, write more. Uh, there could be some pretense that's here. There, there could be some, uh, um, some, um, some issues. All I can say is I hope that you get together. And let me just take the cards now because, you know, I look at the astrology. It just kind of makes me puzzled sometimes um, as to whether this is even a good thing. So let me take the cards, and I'm thinking of Joanne, Joanna, and Mark, Joanna, and Mark, Joanna, and Mark. I'm going to cut the cards and see. And this is about them getting together. Holy Toledo, these cards are good. Wow. Wow. The Nine of Pentacles, that's a wealthy woman surrounded in, in, in a beautiful garden, and finery, and the second card is the uh, is the famous Ten of Cups, where the couple uh, and their kids are looking at a beautiful home somewhere in the country. There's a rainbow consisting of golden cups in the heavens, and the third one is the Hierophant, and the Hierophant is is like the the Pope that's making it official. It's like making it official through um, through a marriage. Well, you're not going to get married until you actually meet each other. So the fourth card is, wow, it's the, um, it, I shuffle these cards really well. I wonder, it's the seven of wands again. That's someone who is making a defense, holding up a wand against six other wands. It looks like it's almost like a battle. It's, it's very, being very defensive, being very defensive. So I get the card of marriage and partnership coming up here and the beautiful joy of having a family together. But I also get this this very defensive uh, seven of, um, of wands, followed by the sun. Okay, the sun card is a is a great card that points to the summer, and it shows to me it shows that maybe you'll be able to sort this out and finally get together by by June or July. And I'm thinking this is summer in uh, the northern hemisphere. Of course, that's winter in the southern hemisphere. But you know, Joanna was the one who called, who wrote so. Going to go with her on this one. That uh, 
um, that it's referring to the summer coming ahead. And let me see, I want to ask, is Mark going to come to the United States? And uh, and that card is the three of the three of cups. Wow, that is fantastic. It's true. Now I'm going to ask: Is Joanna going to go to Australia? Oh boy, that's the eight of that's the card of flight. That's the card of taking to taking to the air and flying. There's a flight of eight wands going across the card. So you know what this means is. I guess there really is a serious attraction and affection between the two of them. They are going to see each other. As a matter of fact, they're going to each go to their respective countries. Uh, I mean, to the to the country of the other of their partner. So you know, he might come over here and meet her. Everything's cool, and she accompanies him back to Australia, or vice versa. Well, I find that is fascinating, and uh, I hope you don't mind. I've taken. A little bit of extra time in in looking at this, which takes us to ten minutes left in the show. And here is a call from oh, a call dropped. I had a call in here from Connecticut, but you didn't stick around, so that's too bad. I am so sorry. Now I'm going to go to eight five six eight five six area. Hello. Hi. How are you? Hi. Good. Good. Thank you. Sorry to keep you waiting. May I ask uh, okay. your your first name and where are you calling from? Uh, Rosemaria from New Jersey. Rosemaria. Rosemaria. Rosemaria, I think I've, I've talked to you before, haven't I? Yeah, about two or three oh, weeks ago, something like that. <laughs> oh, okay. Same one. I know that I did something oh, with it, Rosemaria. I think it might have been an email or something, you know. Um, what can I do for you today? What what questions can um, I answer for you? Quick question. Um, I have a friend that I'm interested in. If we're going to resolve and fix it, if he's coming here or I'm going there, because we're in two different oh. countries, like the last resort that you had, and if you're going to get married. Whoa, okay. Well, so this is, you, you know what's really strange? This is exactly the question I just answered for someone named Joanna, who lives in New York right. City. And, um, but you're Rosemaria. Okay. Right. And it's the same kind of question. Will you fix the fix fix your relationship so that you end up? Is it that you want to visit each other? Is it that you want to live together? Or what's the goal? Um, the goal is marriage, live together, marry my best okay. friend. Okay, Rosemary, marriage. I'm thinking Rosemary, marriage. And where would you like me to cut these cards? What part of the deck? Uh, middle. Middle it is. It just opened like crazy right to the middle of the deck. And let's see what we've got. Well, this is really unusual because I'm picking up some of the same. You know, I shuffled the cards really well, and still I'm getting some of the same cards. Now, the first card that I get is the Six of Wands, which Seven of Wands, which shows some resistance. There's some resistance at first to the idea of marriage. Now, I don't know if it, it, it could be that it's on his part because the next card is the King of Wands. So it goes from the Seven of Wands to the King of Wands. The King of Wands is sitting in his chair. He's worried about things like his business, you know, his profession, uh, maybe some other issues or whatnot. So there is right. something here that's slowing down the relationship. And um, I don't know if it could be. Is there any chance at all that there's a rival, that you have a rival for his affections with another Another person, like, does he have an ex who could still be, like, on the edge of things? What do you think? Uh, she's remarried, and she's not coming back. Good. That is the best news I've heard in a while. That's fantastic. Okay. So where does this go? It goes to the Wheel of Fortune, spinning, 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 followed by the lovers. Okay. The lovers um, points to your getting what you want towards the two of you staying together and towards the relationship deepening and deepening and deepening. It can't get better than the lovers. I mean, there's no actual real marriage card in here. So the lovers card, which shows a man and a woman standing there kind of with a cloud and there's an angel behind them uh, who's sort of blessing them, you know. It's a blessing of the union. Um, but I but I must say, this card comes up only after you get through some um, 
initial resistance. There is some resistance there. Can you tell me um, if there's not another uh, woman on the scene, then what would be the reason for there to be a slowdown? Why is the reason that you're not, you know, that you don't think it's happened yet? Uh, like you said, like the business and some other issues. I, I'm not okay. sure. Okay. <laughs> what yes, is it? you're right. Are you it's, afraid? <laughs> or afraid? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, you know it is. It's, it's. But has he been married before? Yes. And I guess that was a bad experience for him. Yeah, she left and remarried and has kids. So they do. So like she has back. kids with him, or she remarried and has no, kids no. with some other guy. Some other guy. Some other guy. Well, then he's lost out. He's lost out on her affection. He's lost out on the chance of being a dad. So, um, are you of an age and of a uh, you know a positive nature that you want to have family? Would you like to have yes. family with him? That's great. Yes. And you've told him this. You've told him this, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, you know what? I think that that's why the magician, ooh, the magician, that means it's just have to do it. <laughs> if it was leap year, I'd tell you to go and propose to him yourself, you know. But it's going to it's gonna happen suddenly because of the magician, and um, it, that will put, you know, an end to all this this waiting around. I would say stick with it. Stick with it a while. Don't make, like, really big demands on him. He's got to do his thing, you know. If you if you sort of like really really ask for it and can't wait for something, a guy usually backs off a little bit, right? So it has to be right. almost like it has to be his idea. I think you're gonna I think you're gonna be fine, and uh, your many rewards are coming to you. The seven, or uh, pardon me, the the eight of cups. Many things you can choose from right now, and one of them is him. So uh, I hope that helps. That's as much as I can do right at the moment. Okay. Thank you so much. I hope that helped a little. It did. Thanks. Uh, okay, have a great day. And now, with just a few minutes left, here we go to 248. Hello, hello area code 248. May I have your first name, please? Martinica. Martinica? Shanika. Shanika. Oh, Shanika. Okay. Mm-hmm. Panika. Shanika. That's wonderful. Pardon? Can you say that again? Yeah, uh, Shanika. You are Shanika. Okay. You know what? I uh, I think it's because I think you're someplace outside. I can hear a car or something. It's okay. It's okay. Look, I'm going to do this as, as best I can, and I've only got a few minutes. So what is your question for me today? Um, just do you see, when do you see me leaving my current job and moving uh, forward to another job or career. Okay. Well, uh, I'm going to pick three cards, thinking about you. And by the way, are you in a car right now? Or are you outside walking? Or? Uh, I'm I know on a bus. <laughs> you're on a bus. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going to pick three cards for you. And uh, Where do you see me cutting these cards? Near the top? Near the bottom? On the top. Okay. And there it is. Your job. You could have two jobs, the chariot. And you know what? you got a tough boss, a tough boss, the emperor. And I see another boss. I see another guy, the king of cups. Who are these guys? Either it means that you're going to change from a, from a job where the guy is too tough and, and, and hard to deal with, or, um, or it means that you could possibly have two jobs at the same time this year. But the fourth card is... The king of pentacles, I mean, everything would be okay. I see you surrounded by men. I see you surrounded by potential employers. You will be very lucky with this year with your career. And, my dear, okay. thank you so much for your call. And with that, you know that ends our half hour. Come back again another time, and uh, here's my exit music. Mm. Thanks for calling and listening. So if I kiss you in the garden, in the moonlight, would you pardon me? Come tiptoe through the tulips with me. 